think of is your jumper washer stuck in the tap. I mean, you're bunging a new one and Bob's your uncle. Well, go on, then. Oh, I haven't got one. <laughs> a thump it or something. Well, that's what's wrong with them. People keep thumping it. I mean, if people didn't thump it, you wouldn't need a plumber, would you? You great clod. People only thump it because it doesn't work. Which only makes it worse. Rubbish. If we want to make it worse, we call in a plumber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody's interested? The diet permit's not working. Damn clock! 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 refuse to go about my work looking like a fresh fruit salad. <laughs> it's not my fault they're samples. We got them for nothing. I'm not surprised. One can only assume that the bottom has fallen out of the tea cosy market. <laughs> Can't you wear one of the men's caps? I tried that. I look like Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> you know, Sheila, I can remember when you had a sense of humour. Only because Lloyd George died the same day, but I can remember. <laughs> Can't we have the old ones back? You didn't like the old one. I don't like Black Forest Gatto, but I'd sooner stick it on my head than one of these things. <laughs> all right, I'll send the box down. Look, by the way, you know Dr. Fieldsoff? Simon? Well, he looked all right yesterday. I bet he was champing at the bit. He's gone off for two weeks in Bangkok. Choice. Well, everyone's entitled to a holiday. Bangkok's not a holiday. Bangkok is a nocturnal gymnasium. <laughs> Besides, this is the busiest time of the year. Why couldn't he wait like everyone else? Good grief, even sheep can hold off till the spring. <laughs> There's no need to panic. They've arranged for a locum. Oh, no. What? If you think I'm working with a locum, then you are very much mistaken. Well, you know what they're like. They don't know the ropes. They keep asking questions. And nine times out of ten, they think they're the best thing since rectal sigmoidus goes. Why? <laughs> God, the poor chap hasn't even arrived yet, and you're giving him the black spot. I'm not giving him the black spot. I'm sure he's a perfectly pleasant, well-brought-up ignoramus. I would just like to remember that I work with Dr. Haslam. You know, people are beginning to wonder if there's something going on between you and Jonathan. In fact, between you and me, I think Jonathan's beginning to wonder if there's something going on between you and Jonathan. Just don't be sordid. We respect each other professionally, that's all. Jonathan, damn good anaesthetist. All the others are damn good anaesthetists. Remarkable, I'd say. They put me to sleep without the aid of any drugs whatsoever. So, you're not going to work with the local? Not if it were chipped on a slab of rock and data posted from Mount Sinai. Right, now I've got to go and find out what's bunged up your drain. Oh, God. Oh, what's the problem? One of the wheels came off. What do you have to fix it now? Surely we've got other trolleys. <laughs> I'm not trying to fix it. I need spare parts for all the rest. They're all falling to bits. Jonathan, do you think we ought to lobby someone about all this? I mean, look, one spends year after year studying anatomy only to find 90% of the staff running round with, with sink plungers and welding goggles. <laughs> <laughs> if a patient came in now, all we could offer him is a new set of axle rods and scoop the leaves out of his downpipe. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a piece of dilapidated hardware. Look at the staff problem. One absentee and the whole place descends into chaos. Do you know Simon Field is off? Nothing serious, apparently. He's just running a temperature in his nether regions. So they've dug up some otherwise unemployable yob and we're all supposed to go yippee! I mean, it's just too much, really! Well, say something, for God's sake, I've run out of spit. <laughs> Happy birthday. What? Well, it's not much, I'm afraid. I'd know, and I'd have got your black and decker work, mate, and a tub of small vega. <laughs> Flowers? Well, yes, apparently. For me? Well, just a small bunch. I mean, they weren't expensive, compared with the budget for a moonshot. God, my car. You've rammed my car. Car? If that abstract expressionist jalopy of yours... I have has... not rammed your car. Well, all right. Just tell me. I promise I won't be angry. I just want to know. <laughs> Happy birthday. 
birthday. For Pete's sake, happy birthday. I'm trying to wish you a happy birthday. Are you telling me that you bought me flowers because it's my birthday? Well, I know it's incredible, but I can't afford gold. I couldn't find any frankincense, and nobody seems to know what myrrh is. But nobody's ever done that for me before. My husband used to buy me a bunch of daps on the way home from the office. They were both normally dead on arrival. <laughs> I just thought it might be nice. <laughs> Look, you just have to leave it. The first patient's already here. I can't leave it. If I leave it, your sink will get blocked and you'll have a flood. Well, shove it in a prunes, Dan. You've tried everything else. <laughs> I wondered if something had happened. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm almost sure she was singing. Has one of the men been struck off or something? <laughs> she was just helping. Sheila Sabatini. Stranger things have happened. No, they haven't. <laughs> well, actually, I think Dr. Haslam brought us some flowers this morning. Ah, that's it. I thought he was looking pleased with himself. Flowers, eh? Any idea why? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Quite bluntly, old boy, I shall never understand that woman as long as I live. Sheila Serpatini. Total mystery as far as I'm concerned. Yes, I was just saying the same thing. I mean, one minute she's raving like a loony, the next she's singing, for heaven's sakes. Singing? Yes, isn't that what you meant? Good grief, no. Almost came to blows, frankly. Really? If I accidentally take the last pair of gloves in her size, it's hardly a disaster, surely. No, quite. A woman's got a tongue like a merchant seaman. <laughs> Jonathan Haslam seems to think she's in a good mood. Really? Do you think someone ought to warn him? Good God, yes. The sooner the better, I'd say. Yes. Well, I expect someone will, don't you? Must press on. <laughs> yes. Back to the grandstand. This is so typical of a man. What? I said, typical. S so typical of a man. Well, he is a man, isn't he? <laughs> he is up this end. <laughs> I don't mean that swab. He's got a hell of a moustache for a woman. <laughs> I don't mean that. <clears throat> Mind you, some of those Russian shop putters. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, flowers or no flowers, if you open your mouth once more, I shall perform the first ever vasectomy via the throat. <laughs> Retractor, please. Well, I don't know. What's so typical of a man? I can't find his appendix. <laughs> You're blaming him for that? Of course I'm blaming him. Any female would have it lying there waiting. Hold that. <laughs> With a phone around it, presumably, and a little dotted line saying, snip here. Why is it? that men are so totally incapable of leaving anything in its rightful place. Well, he's hardly <laughs> left it on a bus. Jonathan. Something ridiculous. I know it's your birthday, but I happen to be a man. I'm very proud of it. I didn't know it was your birthday. I dare say King Kong was proud of being a gorilla. <laughs> well, he's damn lucky he didn't have his appendix out in this place. Jonathan. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> Mr Haslam, will you kindly remember that this is an operating theatre and keep your comments to yourself? Thank you. It's nice to know that at least one man can survive with his mouth closed. Mrs. Sabatini, if I had to belt up, could you kindly do the same? What? It's always the same, isn't it? Any excuse for a spot of male baiting? If you're telling me a consultant surgeon can't find a simple appendix, that's rubbish. You just don't want to find it because you haven't slagged anybody off for 20 minutes and you need a fix. Now, look here! Happy birthday to you. Point blank of 100% ever to work with Dr. Haslam again. But you like Dr. Haslam? That was this morning. That was 48 minutes ago. Well, I've changed my mind. Have you two had a bust up? If you mean have we had a professional disagreement, the answer is yes. If you mean something more Mills and Boone, I don't know what you mean. 
Well, I don't know. What do you want me to do about Find it? Find me someone else to work with. Sheila, I am not running a bring and buy sale for used anaesthetists. <laughs> Besides, you don't like anyone else. Of course I do. Like who, for instance? Well, Dr. Mulawe. She's pregnant. We've got swing doors. <laughs> She's nine months pregnant. She's up on the ward now. And believe me, the mountain cannot walk to my house. Well, think there must be someone else. Yes, there is. Dr. Olson. Who? The locum. Oh, now, Joyce! Oh, look, it'll only be for one day. You know Jonathan can't stand arguments. He's bound to apologise. Even though you started it. I did not start it. Why not? Something go wrong? <laughs> Do not, I repeat, not work with locums. Loca. What? Well, you know, aquarium, aquaria, agendum, agenda. Geranium? Chrysanthemum? <laughs> dum dum? <laughs> What does it matter? I know you started it. Look, just come and meet him. He's got excellent references. You could try and smile. I am smiling. <laughs> Mrs. Sabatini, Dr. Olson. Dr. Olson, I've been so looking forward to working with you. So I just thought I'd pop along, see how you're settling in. Very well, thank you. I find Mrs. Sabatini a little strange. Yes. Well, I shouldn't go on first impressions. Actually, when you get to know her, she's a total lunatic. Dr. Olson, will you kindly take charge of that patient before she gets her wheels clamped? <laughs> oh, isn't he gorgeous? In as much as Plum Duff is gorgeous, yes. <laughs> not serious. He doesn't understand the way I like to work. Little anaesthetic tricks of the trade that Jonathan does. Look, I don't want to be hard on him, and I know it's his first day, but surgery is a team effort, and I will not have sloppy anaesthesia. In other words, you've been thrashing him about like a squash ball. Well, I've been part of a few home truths, yes. Sheila, that man is a dream. Well, if he's so gorgeous, stick him in a pot and put him on your windowsill. I am trying to get on with some work. <coughs> so I just popped along. See how you were settling in. Dr. Olson, that is a patient, this is a nurse. It's a minor point, but it may help in deciding who gets the gastrectomy. <laughs> Notes from the last patient. I thought you had a boyfriend. I got a mini. I'd still prefer a Porsche Turbo. <laughs> I take it you've seen him. Who? Olsen. Man's got nurses buzzing round him as if he'd disturbed a nest of the damn things. Can't fathom it out personally. I mean, no one made all this fuss over me when I was a locum, and let me tell you, when it came to the ladies... What? Well, <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> Sorry. A bit of a killer, frankly. <laughs> oh, yes, I see. He's a nice chap, though. No? Olsen. Oh, yeah. Not my kind of person, but... Uh... Not exactly a man's man, no. no. <laughs> Anyone seen the locum yet? Yes. Nice chap, I thought. I was just saying the same thing to Haslam. All round good type, as far as I can see. <laughs> yes. Pleasant, easygoing. Everyone seems quite taken with him. All the nurses. Well, of course, new man trying to settle in. I expect someone's passed the word round. You think so? Yes, warm welcome, make him feel at home. Why not? Nice chap. Exactly. I think he's a puff. <laughs> no doubt in my mind whatsoever. Precisely what I thought. All right? Oh, no, not really. I'm working with Hope Wynne. You surprise me. I should have thought two males together was your idea of an intellectual jamboree bag. After all these months of working with a mere woman. 
Personally, I've always found Mr. Hope Wynne's conversation rather stimulating. Not to the brain, unfortunately, but there you are. How's, uh... Dr. Olson? Oh, remarkably good, actually. He's a bit of a hunk, really, isn't he? Fat? Oh, no. I mean, he's got everything the rest of us slopped through buckets of muesli for him. <laughs> yes, I suppose he has. I haven't really noticed. Of course. There are some women who don't go for the, uh... Handsome, intellectual, perfectly sculpted type. Yes, I suppose the Starship Enterprise may have come across one or two. <laughs> Jonathan, can I help you? What? Well, I think if you're waiting for Panorama, you'll find that's a fridge. <laughs> Scully. Sheila, are you still angry about this morning? This morning? What happened this morning? You know, our little contretemps. I mean, it's stupid to get worked up about a thing like that. Can't we just forget the whole thing and get back to normal? How do you mean normal? Well, I didn't say anything this morning, but I've got two tickets for this play. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? Thought you might like to come. Thought it might be nice to see someone else having a brawl for a change. <laughs> yes, it might. Well? <coughs> All right, then. Apology accepted. <laughs> what? Well, I know I shouldn't be telling you this, but... Joyce predicted much the same thing would happen. Anyway, it's all over now, and that's that. What time did the play start? I didn't. What? Apologise. I didn't apologise. I just said the whole thing was stupid. Oh. I mean, we're two fully mature adults. What difference does it make who was right and who was wrong? Yes, indeed. Anyway, I thought I'd pick you up about seven. What for? For this play. Oh, yes. I wonder if you could make it a little later, just be on the safe side. All right. What time? About four in the morning. I'm tied up till then. But you just said... Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I forgot. Someone else has taken me out. Oh. Well, some other time, then. Yes, fine. I shall look forward to it. Just as a matter of interest, who's asked you out? What? Who was it asked you out? Oh, Jonathan, you don't want to know that. I can't wait. All the possible permutations are incredible. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, it was Dr. Olson. The locum? Was that so strange? Well, frankly, yes. You've only known him five minutes. Well, that's just the way it goes, isn't it? Some men just instinctively understand women. Yeah. Well, some other time, then. Fine. Sheila, you sly bat. Why didn't you tell me? Joyce, I wish you'd stop <laughs> creeping about. I'm not creeping about. I've been on bunging half a mile of lead pipe. I've just gone quietly, so I've listened to you two. My God, you've gone and hooked Olsen. Why didn't you tell me he'd asked you out? Well, it's hardly been a chance. I would have decided 20 seconds ago. <laughs> what? Now all that remains is for Dr. Olson to find out. <laughs> so, I just thought I'd pop over. See how you're set to move. Stuart, should you be on a march somewhere? The, the patient's ready. I'm sorry. I didn't realise you were waiting. No, no. Uh, there's plenty of time. <coughs> Incidentally, I, I, I was wondering what your Christian name was. Christian name? Yes, I, I think should dispense with formalities wherever possible. Well, it's uh, Sven, actually. Sven? Charming. <laughs> My name's Sheila. <laughs> <coughs> well, Sven, when you're ready. <laughs> That was an absolutely perfect anaesthetic. Thank you. <laughs> I should be along in a minute. Just um, give me a shout when the next patient's ready. Yes, I will. <laughs> oh, Dr. Haslam, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm a sister, you're a nurse. When I give you an order, you do it without question. You didn't give me any orders. Yes, I did. Stop whistling in on my men. Every time I see someone I like, you're in there like a shot. It's embarrassing. I only went to say hello. It takes one second to say hello. You were there for 25, I counted. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, well, if you ask me, the man's a bit dense. What do I have to do? I've smiled so much, my teeth feel like a windbreak. <laughs> Perhaps you'd have noticed more if you hadn't been wearing a mask. Joyce, you're not helping. Well, I don't know. Why is it so important? You told a little white lie. So what? Jonathan is not going to have the last laugh. Besides, I don't tell lies. If I said I'm going out with Dr. Olson, I am going out with Dr. Olson, whether Dr. Olson likes it or not. 
I doubt it. Why? He's married. Married? <laughs> well, according to his bio, he is. For eight years. Got four kids as well, apparently. Mind you, that doesn't surprise me in the least. Married? Well, it's not his fault. Nobody asked the poor chap. <laughs> ah, Sheila. Ready when you are. Dr. Olson, my name is Mrs. Sabatini. Mrs. <laughs> I thank you to remember that in future. <laughs> Please. Dr. Olson. Yes. Listen, I'm sorry about earlier. Bit of a misunderstanding. Yes? <laughs> anyway, I just thought I'd pop along, see how he's settling in. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. It's a very nice hospital. I just don't think I'm settling in. Nonsense. Everybody loves you. Well, yes. But only for five minutes. <laughs> then something happens, and they all hate me. But only for five minutes, and then they love me again. Ah, uh, George, uh, I take it you've heard. Apparently, the chap's married. So I'm told, yes, find it disgraceful, personally. Exactly, married man chasing round after all the nurses like that? Of course, one. Knew straight away I got the cut of his jib in ten seconds flat. Yes, that's a womanizer from head to toe. I mean, look at me, I've had a wife, God knows how long. I've never so much as glanced at another woman. Well, like me, you wouldn't dream of it. But you see, what people forget is times have changed. Women don't like that kind of thing anymore. And quite right, too. Why should they? Yes, I don't mean to blow my own trumpet, but I do regard myself as being simpatico to the female point of view. <laughs> as you know, Sheila Sabatini's had the hots for him all afternoon. Olsen. Yes, shot round the hospital like wildfire. <laughs> it turns out that he's married. <laughs> <laughs> you really think one should laugh, George? <laughs> Smile when your heart is breaking. <laughs> yes? Nothing. All right, so he's married. I don't see what's so funny. It's obviously some kind of gigolo. What? He needs more than one woman. Do you know I caught him chatting up one of the nurses? Who? Stuart. <laughs> just a well, some men are just like that. Sheila, I've just been talking to him. His wife's name's Sophie. They've been married eight years, happily. Which is why I refuse to go out with him, naturally. Don't you think you're being a bit unfair? I don't know what you mean. Well, just because we're having a fight, there's no need to involve him. The poor chap's a nervous wreck. He comes here to get on with a job and he feels like he's landed up in a spaghetti western. <coughs> and now you're treating him like he's some kind of stud rabbit. <laughs> Casanova, if you said boo to him now, I'd leap all the way back to Sweden. <laughs> they think it's gone on long enough. Well, I may have misunderstood what he said. Well, I think he deserves an apology, frankly. That's rich coming from you! All right, I apologise. What? For this morning. I apologise. I'm very sorry. Now, it's your turn. So, although I, I can't explain exactly what was going on, I feel I owe you an apology. Well, I must say that's very kind of you. Not at all. Uh, incidentally, I, I heard it was your birthday today. Yes, yes it is. I wonder... What? Well, I wonder if I could take you out somewhere to celebrate. Just a small restaurant out in the wild somewhere. Actually, I know quite a good hotel. Shut up. 